Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Well, we have the last one that we'll be producing here today, uh, for a little while at least, so in a couple of weeks I'll be uh, mentioning to everybody when I'm ready for the new set of batches for these Cryptids and Monsters video. And I wanted to end at least this run with what is considered perhaps one of the most mysterious monsters. It's probably not even a cryptid, but more like a monster that I've come that I've seen so I wanted to present this to everybody here it's so mysterious that it actually doesn't even have a name so that's how mysterious and seclusive it is and what little information is pertaining to this particular monster I mean there's barely shreds of information out there but even to this day hundreds of years later it still has an impact, an urban legend type status of sorts, so I definitely wanted to talk about that here. And the particular cryptid that I'm referring to is the cryptid known as the Nameless Thing of Berkeley Square. Yes, that is the official title, the Nameless Thing of Berkeley Square. So again, this is a monster that's so mysterious it doesn't even have its own name. Uh, this is the unofficial title that it's been going by all these years since then. So, uh, pretty, pretty interesting stuff that I'm about to present. So, with regards to this particular monster, so you have to go back to the very beginning, and that would be the year 1740, uh, when a particular building that ended up being called Building Number 50 was built by a gentleman named William Kent. You'll see a picture of the building here. This is, by the way, a building that still exists. So what happened within this building with this particular monster, it's still there. Uh, like, my, like a lot of buildings in England where this occurred, uh, those buildings la have lasted now hundreds of years and they're still being utilized to this day on daily activities. So that's what makes part of this particular monster story so fascinating is that what occurred is still there right now and potentially could still occur in the future and what occurred particularly occurred on the second floor of this building which I'll talk about uh, some details on in a little bit here so again it's building number 50 of this uh, Berkeley Square is what the area is called and the buildings surrounding it by the way are called number 48 and 49 and so forth that's why uh, this particular building has that designation by the way some pretty famous people apparently um, have stayed in some of the surrounding buildings but it's this one building building number 50 it's the one that has uh, maintained a certain sense of dread a certain sense of eeriness to it um, it was the one building that apparently got its reputation as being one of the most terrifying buildings in England so that's when the building was built so then fast forward to the mid 1800s about 1840 to be exact and that's when the very first encounter with this nameless monster occurred into the year 1840 there's a guy by the name of Sir Robert Warboys W-A-R-B-O-Y-S Warboys who has uh, a bet that he wanted to take uh, he was 20 years old at the time he was uh, going to school as a scholar and he had heard about this particular building and the urban legend type status that it had garnered uh, by this point nothing has occurred yet with that nameless monster but uh, the building itself had already developed a reputation again an eerie sense of dread was associated with it and so his colleagues his students uh, his student friends um, they challenged him to spend the night and to spend the night not only there but on the second floor that contained that apparently had the most activity the most sense of eeriness and so being the young guy that he was he accepted the challenge and he went up basically to the building they had a guardhouse there and he convinced this guardhouse uh, hey you know let me stay the night give me the keys and uh, it's not known if he told him if he was there just to essentially uh, be a part of a challenge or if he just wanted a night to stay but uh, in either case the guard gave him the keys and he was on his way so he went to the second floor with nothing but a pistol and a candle and again what you're seeing here is an interpretation by the way of a newspaper depicting this story so again this was in newspapers this is why this is also very fascinating in that this was documented in real life this was documented by a newspaper 
so this is something that other people saw and reported as well so that's uh, so it makes it very real world like um, that's why again this this is a very fascinating story to tell so he went up there um, a quick side note the picture is a little misleading you'll see that on the drawing um, it shows him going down to a basement but in actuality um, he went to the second floor instead but I guess the newspaper took a, a little bit of liberty on that so he went to the second floor armed with nothing but a pistol and a candle and was ready to I guess accept the challenge and see if he could sleep the night there so things went by and then 45 minutes later the guard who was there at the building I guess he had fallen asleep but he had was woken up because he heard a noise coming from the room above right there on that second floor the, the same room that this guy uh, Robert was was sleeping at he heard a noise didn't think much of it but then all of a sudden he heard a gunshot a gunshot from that very pistol that Robert had so uh, the guard immediately ran up and when he burst through the door he had to knock it in fact down by force so that's how quickly he ran up on there um, he saw something that he reported he will never forget for life did he actually see a monster no did he actually see the remnants of a monster from the gunshot no he didn't see anything in fact what he did see that he will never forget for, his, uh, for the rest of his life was the corpse of this guy Sir Robert Warboils uh, essentially frozen stiff with the most horrible facial expression on his face it was as if he saw the most dreadful scariest unimaginative thing he could ever see and died right on the spot on there and the only thing the guard could find was the hole that the bullet made on the floor uh, from Robert's gun but that was about it um, he didn't see anything else he saw Warboils clutching his pistol smoke was apparently still coming out of the pistol in fact that's how quickly he ran up there but he was no longer alive in fact um, the way he described Warboils face um, his teeth were tightly shut um, his eyes bulged as if they were ready to jump out of the skull it looks like he saw something that was so terrible that it killed him instantly and that was about it some uh, some other guards that were nearby the other buildings who had also heard the shot came in a little afterward and they asked them if anything has been shot and that was they said no nothing was shot just the floor itself but what was it that killed Warboils wasn't known at that time so that was the very first experience with this nameless monster um, now fast forward to a, a couple of 40 years later and uh, the years 1887 and we have the second experience with this nameless monster and now we have an experience where we have a witness that lives and is able to tell about what they saw so the story goes that two sailors from uh, Portsmouth, a nearby area, their names were Robert Martin and Edward Blunden, decided to get drunk near the complex, near that uh, building there, and before they were going to go home, uh, they decided they wanted to find a place to rest. So as they were walking, they came across this building. And it makes The way the story goes, it makes it kind of eerie. It makes you wonder if uh, the people that stayed at these, at the second floor if they were drawn to it or manipulated to be drawn to it that's that's another part that makes the story quite fascinating because it's too much of a coincidence that people keep finding this particular second floor anyways they realized they were too drunk and so they just wanted to find a place to stay um, it apparently began raining as well um, so they they came across this building at 50 Berkeley Street and being drunk they just decided to let themselves in quote unquote and the way they did it is to actually broke into the basement so they both broke into it and they went down and they decided to stay on there uh, what happened though afterward was that the uh, two boys and by the way you'll see pictures of them here these are again the boys themselves these are their actual pictures that's what makes this also so f another point that's so fascinating on there is that these are real people that this happened to so uh, these aren't made up stories of let's say uh, you know if it happened to a gentleman in Australia people said or it happened to um, a pirate in Indonesia no no this this would these are real people with real names 
So they broke into the basement and not wanting to look suspicious, they actually decided to go up to the second floor uh, where it was, I guess, warmer and decided to sleep on there. So the two boys, there they are, they're enjoying the night, they're sleeping on there. When all of a sudden, about an hour later, uh, Edward woke up. Um, when he woke up, what he saw was what he later described is apparently the only um, physical description of this nameless monster yet. Um, by all accounts, he seems to be the only person, again, that that saw this and was able to uh, report it to others. So here's what he saw. He saw a quote-unquote mysterious thing with a gray color crawling around the floor. Uh, people, the way he described it was it looked like, think of it like an octopus of some sort. Um, it was a strange gray creeping thing that was creeping slowly across the wooden floor. Um, it had tentacles of some sort as well. Uh, the way that it moved also, it convinced them that it was real, was the fact that um, each time the creature moved, the wooden floor that it was on would creak um, on the spots that it was moving as well. As Belendon said it, um, he could hear the sound of friction within the floor and this made him shudder even more so because again, this thing was real. Here was this, whatever it was, slowly creeping around the bed anticipating that they would stay asleep and not realizing that uh, one of them was awake on there. Uh, the creature then was standing awkward in front of him and that's when the other guy uh, woke uh, what was his name on there? Oh yeah, he awoke Martin. Martin realized what was happening and then the creature after standing awkwardly in front of them suddenly jumped on there. Um, it jumped onto Martin in fact and this guy Martin began shaking uh, trying to grab this thing, trying to force it off of it off of him but the creature would not let go and not only did it land on this guy Martin but it landed um, essentially on his neck on there. So Blunden, Martin Blunden, um, he began screaming and struggling as much as he could. Uh, this other guy that was with him essentially ran off at that moment to try to get some help. Um, you couldn't really blame him for that as well because if he was running uh, to try to get some help, but if he was also running to try to, let's say, save himself at the same time, one can't blame him for that as well. So he runs off, and when he runs off, he's able to find the police on there. The creature is still on Blunden by this point, and the two of them, the Martin guy and the police officer, try to run back, but when they arrive to the second floor, they find that everything is empty. The only thing they could find was Blunden's corpse right there on the basement, the very same huge shock expression face as if he'd seen the most horrible thing in the world on it and he was dead. Um, he had the same pretty much status as the other gentleman that when he died he died with a gigantic shock on his face uh, uh, eyes bulging everything on there so that was the second encounter on there so ever since then there really hasn't been any other occurrence but it was enough by this point for this particular monster tale to essentially get a, a following of its own to this day in fact people still go to this building to try to see what's happening this building is owned by the way by a gentleman that goes by the name of ed mags you'll see a picture of him here it's actually a bookshop now and this particular bookshop People can go in, they can visit, they can buy, they can read, do whatever, but nobody is apparently permitted to go to the second floor. In fact, the second floor is taped off. It has a section that is completely shut off on there. Nobody can go through it on there. Uh, the police have put a warning sign in front of it, in fact, in the walls, and that way nobody can go through. So fascinating stuff what do you guys think has anybody been there share your tips all your comments below share your tales um, I'll try to see if I can find anything else on this fascinating creature but otherwise there it is the nameless thing of Berkeley Square so thanks again everybody take care